If you're new to Google Tag Manager and want to simplify tracking on your website, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll walk you through the essentials of GTM, what it is, how it works, and why it's such a powerful tool for managing your tags. We'll break down key concepts like tags, triggers, and variables, and I'll guide you step-by-step -step on how to add Google Analytics to your website using the Google Tag in GTM. Stick around until the end because I've included a quiz to test your GTM knowledge. Google Tag Manager is a tool that makes managing marketing and analytics tags much easier. Instead of manually adding tracking codes to different parts of your website, GTM provides a centralized way to handle them all. It acts as a bridge between your website and the platforms you're using, whether it's Google Analytics, Google Ads, or other third-party tools. For example, you might want to add the Google Analytics tag to all of the pages of your website. And then you might decide to add a Google Ads conversion tracking tag and a Metapixel for Facebook to track a thank you page. You could hard code the Google Analytics tag in your website's template and then add the Google Ads tag and the Metapixel event tag to the specific page. However, this will quickly become difficult to manage and it's easy to lose track of where tags have been installed. With Google Tag Manager, we can add one piece of code to all of the pages on our website. This is called the container. We then configure Google Tag Manager to fire tags on particular pages or for particular actions. So that's really the key benefit of Google Tag Manager. It lets you centrally manage all of your tags. Now let's cover some important terminology. First, tags. In most cases, a tag is a piece of JavaScript code. They typically collect data and then send it to a particular platform. Like when we add a tag to send information about people viewing our website to Google Analytics. We can also use tags to add additional functionality to our website. For example, we could use a tag to add a social sharing widget to our blog, or we could add a tag to install an A-B testing platform like Crazy Egg or Zoho PageSense to your website. Next are triggers. Triggers let you control when a tag should or shouldn't fire on your website. For example, we can use the built-in initialization all pages trigger to add a tag to every page of our website. And we can also create our own triggers. Maybe we want to track people clicking the announcement banner we have featured at the top of our website. Or maybe we want to fire a specific tag on a thank you page. We can do this by creating and applying triggers to our tags. Then there are variables. Variables are placeholders for information that we can use in Google Tag Manager. For example, we might want to capture details about a link someone clicked on our website. We can then use this information in our tags, triggers, and even other variables. There is a range of built-in variables that let us access information automatically. And we can also create custom variables. And we have our container. A container stores all of the tags, triggers, and variables for your website. Now that we've covered the most important terms to get started, let's head to Google Tag Manager. If you haven't used Google Tag Manager before, then you can head to tagmanager.google.com. We can see I already have an account and containers set up. So I'm going to click Create Account on the top right corner. You will see similar steps if you're getting started for the first time. You need to name your account. Select your country and choose if you want to share anonymous data with Google. Then we need to name our container. You can name your container anything you like, but I suggest something that makes it easy to identify the website you're going to install it on. And since we're going to be measuring a website, let's select web and then click create.
Our new account and container has now been created and we're now given two pieces of code. The first one is the most important. This is the JavaScript container code. And you'll need to add this to all of the pages of your website. When we add Google Tag Manager to our website, we're adding this container code. This code should be placed inside the head tag on your website and ideally should be one of the first things in your head tag. The second piece of code is the NoScript version of the container. This will load if someone has JavaScript disabled. Since almost all of the tags we use in Google Tag Manager are JavaScript, this won't improve the accuracy of the data we collect. So if you can't add this extra NoScript code to your website, it won't have a major impact. Let's close this. And let's copy the container ID. This is at the top and starts with GTM and then a dash. Now it's time to add the code to our website. There are different ways you can add the container code depending on how you've created your website. For example, if you're using WordPress, then you can use a plugin to add the container to all of your pages. Let's head to WordPress to take a look. This is the GTM for WordPress plugin. It's just one of the plugins you can use to add the container code to all of the pages on your WordPress site. We're going to use this plugin because it lets us track e-commerce transactions and this is something we'll cover in a future video. Okay, to add Google Tag Manager, let's install the plugin. And let's activate the plugin. Let's select Settings. Now we need to paste our container ID. There are additional settings you can adjust in the GTM for WordPress plugin, but we're going to leave these for now and let's click Save Changes. I sometimes find that changes aren't saved correctly, so if you don't see your container ID, try clicking Save again and ensure your container ID appears in the settings. And you also need to ensure the container code on off option is set to on. We can see this has changed to off, so let's select on and click save changes again. Our Google Tag Manager container has now been added to all of the pages of our WordPress site. If you're using a different website platform, I recommend checking out the official support documentation for the best way to add Google Tag Manager. If you're on Shopify or Squarespace, I've included links to detailed tutorials in the video description. And if there's a specific platform you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now that we've added Google Tag Manager to our website, it's time to configure our first tags. Let's head to Google Tag Manager. We're going to start by adding Google Analytics to our website, so let's create a new tag. Let's name the tag Google Tag GA4 Page View. And let's select Tag Configuration. We're going to start by selecting Google Tag as the tag type. The Google tag lets us send data to Google Analytics using our GA4 measurement ID. In this video, we're just going to focus on adding the tags, but if you'd like to learn more about GA4, then I've included a link in the extra resources in the description below this video. Now we need to get our measurement ID, so let's head to Google Analytics. This is the admin area of a GA4 property and I'm going to select Data Streams. And then I'm going to select the data stream for my website. You can now copy the measurement ID for your data stream on the top right corner. And now we can head back to Google Tag Manager. You can paste the measurement ID under Tag ID, 
but we're going to create a variable so that we can reuse the measurement ID across multiple tags. This also means if you ever need to change the measurement ID, you can just update it in one place. So let's click the variable icon under tag ID. Now let's click the plus sign on the top right corner. Let's name the variable GA4 measurement ID. Select variable configuration. Then choose constant as the variable type. Now let's paste our measurement ID as the value. And let's click save. Below tag configuration we can see triggering. And the initialization all pages trigger is added by default. This will fire our tag on all of the pages of our website before any other tags, apart from any tags used for consent. For example, if you have a cookie banner on your website, then this should be triggered before the Google tag. So using the initialization all pages trigger will mean we can report all of the pages people are viewing on our website. Okay, now let's save the tag. I'm going to cover best practices for previewing and testing your tags in another video. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe to be notified when I release the next Google Tag Manager tutorial. There's also the option to publish the changes you've made to your live website. This is the submit button. It's important to highlight that if you already have Google Analytics installed on your website, you will want to remove this at the same time you publish your changes. Otherwise, you will have the tag from Google Tag Manager and your existing Google Analytics tag on your website. So two identical tags, which isn't good. So I will also be covering migration in more detail in a future video. For now, you've successfully added your first tag to Google Tag Manager and you understand the difference between tags, triggers, and variables. Are you ready to test your Google Tag Manager knowledge? You can find a link to my Google Tag Manager quiz in the description below this video. And if you'd like to learn more about Google Tag Manager, make sure to subscribe to this channel. I will be releasing more tutorials covering even more GTM topics. We're going to cover adding additional tags to your container, previewing and testing your tags, best practices for migration and more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.